All right. So, finally begin. Finally ready to begin a 100% speedrun full of Radiance online. If I can get uh, under the hour mark that's uh, been eluding me a little bit. Incredible we've gotten this far. That's like levels are right. Okay, how's that? I check my levels. All right. Seems about good. Okay, so for 100%, very briefly to begin, you may notice that our characters do not have max hit points. We only have six each, which is a bit low. Uh, over the course of our work on this game, Rich B and I have discovered that a couple of different things uh, manipulate difficulty of the random encounters in several of the areas, and most particularly the slums, the first area we're going to clear on 100%. So by having less hit points, it actually makes the fights 50% uh, easier. So a little bit of danger not having the full hit points, but it makes up for it with the uh, reduced uh, encountering and such. We can take out each fight with a single sleep spell pretty much guaranteed unless they surprise us, so... Let's go ahead and get started now. As always, we are greeted by Rolf on our arrival in the docks. We just left the docks, but they have to show us that this is what they are. Yep, this is where you came from. A boat to, into the city. Show us around the town, and we get uh, 30 seconds of this. We have to mash enter button through before we get to start our journey. Have to go and uh, buy equipment, which we'll get a couple of things are. Into the shop. Now I am buying tridents because they're the uh, one of the best overall weapons you can get for cheap. They're also one-handed if I pick up shields, although uh, I don't want to because that will lower my armor class below zero and actually increase the difficulty. So we just want straight banded mail. Adjust the speed to zero at the start. We're all fighter magic users, so we all have uh, the ability to learn first level spells. I'm going to do a couple of fights first. No sound in the game because that slows the game down. I might actually turn it on for some marathons now that uh, the game is regular short. To cast the spell. So you see, even this random encounter, we only have four people because of our low hit points. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. Now we need to fight, uh, I believe it's 24 battles total. Normally you're only supposed to fight uh, 15 random encounters and then do a bunch of uh, set encounters. But as it turns out, uh, conveniently, you can, if you sleep without the place being cleared, they will... Uh, There will be some, uh... Good encounters right there was a little bit in... Okay. But normally you have to do like nine uh, set encounters in the slums and then three, uh, and then 15 random encounters. But as it turns out, you can... <laughs> yep, indeed it is. But we're going to manipulate a little trick here that was found. The game keeps track of the number of total encounters, and even though regular random encounters just in the field, can, you can run out of them after uh, 15, you can continue to just sleep in places and uh, get more random encounters until you've hit the 24 limit, and they will count the slums as completed. So we'll get to avoid a lot of the really nasty fights like the trolls and ogres battles. So that's... Uh, 
we're just getting a couple of the set encounters that uh, either give the biggest rewards and or are the quickest to take care of. There's treasure here we can look for as well. For now, give you the ring, because if we go to negative one, the game will get harder. We don't want that. All right, so now, actually, the place I want to look for these encounters is right here. Oh, come on. We've surprised a party of goblins, even though they came upon us while we were sleeping. I really love this. So we're just going to stand right here. By doing an up formation, we'll be able to... Uh, my word, they are not uh, coming very much here. And surprised the party of kobolds. By staying up here, they're in a formation where we can get all four with a single sleep spell and eat fight. Now, there is a chance that we can memorize their spells as well while we're uh, doing this, so... I'm going to go ahead and try... No, that's... I'm trying to do M for magic instead of C for cast. There are no RNG drops from the monsters, no. There's nothing that, uh... That actually, all of the drops are pretty much set, and uh, they're of no value from the random encounters. There are a couple of areas with random uh, magic items, of course, but the way the new route works, they're not. Uh, most of the random stuff is not even worth going for. It takes too long. Who cast the spell? I need to keep better track of who cast uh, my spell each time, so I don't waste time on that. But it's worth it to. Uh, try and memorize each time if I get it fast enough because then I don't have to move in order to uh, do that. Good, I got my me memorization there. Okay, Viridian. It's always hard for me to keep track of uh, what's going on in these fights in the short time. Even for orcs, just quickly go down to sleep spell. I kind of discovered this on accident. I was playing around with various things, trying to uh, make the... Uh, uh, we got surprised this time. Holy cow! One shot. That's uh, very inconvenient. Wow, we took some major damage that time. That's pretty rare. Okay, so... Luckily, we're... Another nice thing about being in this step is that we're one step away from uh, being able to... Just get a guaranteed safe resting place. But I was trying a couple of things. Uh, putting on weapons lowers... Ranged weapons lowers your Thaco, especially if you use the magic ones, and that uh, increases the difficulty. I suddenly found I was fighting more powerful enemies because of that. Uh, also, when I was taking damage in some of the fights while doing this practice, I also found that uh, suddenly, because I was taking damage, the fights were getting smaller, and that's when I realized that your hit points do affect uh, that difficulty as well. So I played around with uh, different character types constantly until I... Uh, Different levels of hit points. My word, again, this is ba really bad luck right here. Not super bad because of experience loss, just the time required to uh, rest up. Heal. The odds of these people hitting zero armor class, even in surprise, is pretty darn low, and especially one-shotting. But when I was uh, a little bit hurt, but still just uh, sleeping in this position, uh, the fact that I was suddenly getting smaller fights made me realize that uh, that's a part of it as well. So I played with around with it until I got a set amount of hit points that uh, allowed me to... Golly, now we're uh, not able to rest long. That's okay, that's why I have four sleep spells.
Okay, that's uh, four in a row now. That's luckily Viridian went first, so quick and easy sleep spell there, but now all four of them need uh, their spells. There we go. Got him back. That's good. Even more random encounters because of this than uh, normal, but who was it? Was it Cyan? No, was it Crimson? Oh, it was Azure, of course. That was Bigington. And still Azure. Azure and Crimson. Okay, are we done? We are done. All right. After that many days, we're guaranteed to have done it. Now, the one thing we do still have to do is uh, get Oz Olo's potion. No, that's here. Through the rope guild. Going a bit too fast. Get all those potion, go to Olo. I still love the fact that we uh, complete this quest without ever receiving the quest. Those are always fun games where you can sequence break by not having to go pick up a quest in order to complete it. You break into Olo's room and you're like, hey, we've got your potion. And he's just like, okay, give it to me. So yeah, I don't even look at the magic items. Those are random drops. They might be useful, but it's not really worth looking at because it would take too long to identify whether they are actually any good or not. Okay, now I have to stand around until daybreak, so I just look in place to spend time. And that's the slums cleared. Slightly off time-wise from uh, what we should have because of uh, the fact that... Mm, that wasn't really uh, great jewelry. Okay, there we go. That might be all the gold we need for a little bit. Um, cool. Need to change out all this money I've got. Okay, 900 platinum. That's good. Uh, no, we're not going to be able to train mate. We're really just short. It's a bit sad. But, well, I was trying a couple of things to uh, get second level mage in this as well and then go to the well, but probably is not worth the time. All right, now this is the sequence break that was discovered by Rich B, which I kind of was aware was possible, but uh, I just was not confident that it was really plausible. But what we are going to do is uh, head over to the end game area to pick up a couple of magic items and some big experience. We surprised them, that's good. Sky's party is monsters. We'll go ahead and go to the plaza. You have to step kind of carefully here because if you get encounters and they just leave you alone, they can uh, actually cause you to misstep. All right, we come in here, we find this guy driving his wagon, we kill him and steal the wagon. We sometimes they recognize you even with the wagon. It's really crazy. But uh, and then you just leave and come back. You pay them 15 gold. They let you through. Now we come into here. Uh, we use the clothing as a disguise and leave. Now I'm going to go pick up a real quick magic sword, plus two, that will be useful for one of my fighters. Probably a small time loss to get it, but I like the safety of it. Now, here's the real fun fight. Come in here and there's a 5th level cleric and two 1st level clerics. The 5th level cleric is extremely dangerous. But with a couple of sleep spells, they are all uh, asleep and we've one-shot them. And then we get our favorite uh, little treasure, the Necklace of Missiles. As well as plate mail plus one and a uh, trident plus, or a mace plus three. So well, basically the best weapon in the game really that's uh, easy to get except for some random ones or really, really hard to get one. Now we're going to come in here give the password of Rodia, come up to this tower. We find a harmless middle-aged man who's a 7th uh, level mage. And so we're going to kill him. We cannot sleep the 7th level mage. Oh, jeez. That was uh, unfortunate. Okay. Very sweet loot for as easy it is. This is a slightly harder fight, really. Uh, 
Okay, um, I saved before this one, but not before the other one, so unfortunately I have to do this over again. Not that one. Time is a little bit off because I just changed my... Uh... Most of my characters usually get to go before the mage. And I uh, prefer to let my fighter in the new plate mail do this trick, but unfortunately uh, he did not go fast enough here. And the other two didn't hit him because his armor class is pretty high. Okay, here we go. Now by uh, forcing him to uh, attack us like that, it actually will waste his turn, so that's a very, uh, very nice thing there. Now we don't need these bracers. Okay, now that's all we needed here. That gives us a lot of experience. Uh, and... A couple of uh, magic items that we can sell or use. Now we run away from the bugbears. We come over here, leave the plaza by this way. We've left the city. Now, say because I'm... A group of kobolds, we surprise them. Take the boat into the area. Now we're here. Now, you have to once again wait for everything to open. Okay, there's the plaza done, because we uh, took care of that while we were in there. Cordona. Alright, now we can level up our mages finally. Turn magic missile for some of the fights, make them easier. Might not be worth it to learn Magic Missile, but uh, it's always a good safety thing for the last fight with Tyrant Draxus. Okay, um, and actually, we need to come in here, save A, add our bags to the party, and begin our shenanigans. So characters who are, uh, the game allows you to create characters and change your party pretty much any point when you're at a uh, place like this. So by creating a character outside of the party and then adding him in, giving him stuff, removing him, and then loading up a Gabe's save game before you gave it to him, his items in the pool are not changed. But, uh, but this way we can multiply equipment and get lots and lots of the necklaces. Because this is 100%, we're going to be in a lot of fights, and this is going to be the fastest way to get through them, so we do enough for four for everybody. Okay, remove, save A, alright. Now, we have these bracers, so we don't really need the plate mail anymore, actually. It's the uh, slightly worse armor class, but it gives us uh, maximum movement, so that is super duper convenient. Alright. And now we're actually going to trade this uh, ring of protection to Crimson. So that he, uh... That, alright, so save the game. Now we can go to so-called keep and deal with it. It's going to be super easy now that we have so many necklaces and missiles. Uh, sometimes you can get like one encounter or no encounters, and sometimes you get uh, the encounters with these skeletons every step. So you really only need one necklace of missiles shot to win this battle. The turn after this, they will make a morale check, realize that they're all dead, and uh, 
to render. I like to use two just to, well, one among other things to eliminate the number of enemies that are acting. Uh, it's more important in any percent, I feel, because you have one or two vulnerable mages they could track down and attack, but uh, still just getting rid of these nine guys makes uh, the next step go a little bit quicker. That's nine less guys having to do things tracking you down, surrounding you. Amazingly, the uh, AI is so much better in Pool of Radiance than the later games. Your characters are of no danger of using Necklace of Missiles in a manner that will hurt your party. It's rather incredible, really. Okay, so you take the shield and you take the mace plus two, so now we all have... The top three fighters all have at least a plus two weapon. Of course. so we can't get to level 4 fighter yet. Alright, now it's time to go get our other super important magic item. A bay. Select. We enter into the south area. Now this fight is uh, also determined in difficulty by the uh, party strength, I believe. I've seen much bigger groups when I come even stronger than this. But uh, it doesn't really matter. They're not that much to pay. Now if we're lucky, we'll get a random encounter that will... Uh, Yes, this is the group. We just flee. You can flee pretty much all of the encounters in this uh, section as long as you don't get uh, surprised. Which is convenient. And if you encounter these four, you don't have to fight these orcs out here. Just in case, because uh, things can go wrong if Mace goes before I get to fireballing too many times. So with these necklaces and missiles, we can take out this huge army of orcs with no problem whatsoever. These orcs, unfortunately, do not uh, ha uh, are not able to morale failure. Good, Mace took full damage as well. Nobody's making their saving throws. This is very nice. Good, 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 good. Okay. Probably should have used a sleep spell to clean up rather than this quick combat angle, but whatever. Don't need anything he has. The only thing we really need here is... Our dust and wand. The wand is going to be useful at the end of the game, mostly. It healed. Um, oh, I was supposed to go at leaving the wealthy district. That was actually the finish there. And that was the temple. I never split these right. But I try to remember them. Keep. Okay, let's see if I can remember how to do the mansion. Jeez. Not off to a great start here. Oops. 
Good, they won't let me cast knock in combat because it's useless. That's very convenient. Too close to the wild to use fireballs, but sleep spells are just as good at this point. Uh, yes, go south. They surprise us, so they all get to go before we do, which is super inconvenient. actually one of the worst fights in the game. Now the morale breaks? Okay, we've got them. Okay, good. Looks like we cleared this place out. Now there's a random number of thieves. You have to kill like usually one thief in addition to all the groups, so if they all manage to escape from you when you're going between rooms, you have to run through them until you track down the guy. And it's super annoying. If you try to sleep, he usually stabs you and then runs away before you get a chance to attack him. Hmm. Oh, I don't need to worry about memory. Right now. Leave. Take the boat to the civilized area. And snuggle up the night, which is inconvenient. Um, how much platinum do you have? Only enough for one more level. Oh. I should sell something. Or praise. more money somewhere at some point. No, we don't want to break in uh, for a bit. Now we can step in. Alright. So, now we need to go to the graveyard after we level up. Oh, we can't even level up yet. That's inconvenient. I'm used to having a little more experience by this point. And bay. Oh, uh, whoops. Actually, no. I do need to go in there, though, because I need to multiply this dust before I go into the graveyard. Alright. Keep the game is safe. Now, add our good friend Bags to the party. Trade the dust and the wand to him. Move him from the party so he's in the party pool and won't be affected by the loading of the game. Load the game before we gave him the items. Add bags into the party. Two bags. Trade his dust and his wand. Move. Add him back to the party. You want to save with him outside the party or else he uh, Of course, not have the items. He, he is removed from the party pool if he's affected in a, a party later on. Okay, those are the only wands I need. That's all the dust will need for the game. Leave. The north to the graveyard. All right, time to use our first dust. Oh, I messed up a little bit though. You can make these fights easier by, uh... 
by actually uh, removing your equipment before the uh, battle starts because it tracks your equipment, uh, your all of your stat levels when you enter the graveyard to determine the power of all the random encounters. Not that big a deal, though. Jeez. These are the worst fights. Sometimes I wonder if it's better just to quit and reload. I did uh, save recently. Here. About to find out. Yep. <laughs> the white groups are just too much of a pain, and if I get too many of them, I use up too many charges of Nicholas. RNG for random encounters is better. If I, uh, now if I do remember to remove my equipment, that will probably, this is a set encounter, so, uh, this we don't care about. We have to take it, so, there we go. Now, whites can drain your levels, so I want to get out of combat with them and hit them from afar so that, uh, I don't get my levels drained. Not a huge deal if I do, because I'll get a lot more experience to recover the levels, even though I can't really use restoration, but, you know, just for the sake of the... No, it doesn't matter. Pick them out. Now, there are two specters we have to, uh, take out. This is one of them. Once again, specters can also, uh, drain levels, so we want to be out of the way. Since we have Dust of Disappearance on, he can't see us, so he won't even track us down if he, uh... He, he can attack us if he's next to us, but cannot if he isn't, and he won't even move to try and find us. They're just programmed to do nothing if they can't see an enemy. We've already used up a necklace on him. Boom. Oh, we safe. Probably should have shared the money. So I can have it, but... Now these are the other two specters, and they attack us from range anyway, so we just wander up about here. Is that on the back row? And if we get lucky, it'll take only a couple of fireballs. Got one out and two, that's not bad, but the other one's still alive. My four, boom, there we go. We killed the undead. All right, now time to take out the vampire once again. Uh, he can drain a lot of levels, and we don't want that, so hopefully we will all go before he uh, gets a chance. Good, good. The vampire will not attack us now because he's not in range. Most excellent. Oh, darn. Okay, um, not what I wanted. I accidentally moved with him down instead of over, and so I can't use my necklaces because that's going to be a bit of a time waste, but oh well. Very weak one there. Okay, now we're good. He's still alive. Let's use the Wand of Lightning on him one more time. That's the place I would uh, most like to use the Wand of Lightning as well, so... Now we have to fight the vampire a second time, which is basically in his coffin, killing him there. Normally you stake the vampire in their coffin, but... Four points of electricity, Elvi. Alright, 22, good. So that's the uh, graveyard. Now we don't have to worry about any more random encounters here. Take the boat to the civilized area. Boom, lots of experience. Too much experience, in fact. That's okay. Now our experience has actually probably gone down. 
maybe not. Oh, we're one away from uh, leveling. Now we have lots of jewelry, though, so now we can... All right. There, that should be the last of the money that we need for the game. Okay, now time to go to the well. Take off that wand. Oh, jeez. All right. That's unfortunate. Yeah, I need to take off that wand for now. They, I don't need to use it against kobolds. shot by arrows, they usually miss. We fight, of course, and now let's just use some necklaces to flatter these guys. Now, as long as we're down in the well, we can sleep perfectly in this place. Just for a few days. Out the rungs. No one encounters as I'm heading to the library. Excellent. Okay. I need to cast the Nox spell to get in here. Now we're about to fight a Basilisk. We're going to use this uh, Force Reaction to hopefully prevent him from being able to uh, hit us. Because as long as we do this, he does not get to... Uh... Okay. Didn't want to use Necklace of Missiles on him if I didn't have to. Now I get a Cloak of uh, Displacement, which is two more armor class. Very convenient. All right, now I need to loot some books here in the library. There are two books here. I think that's it. Oh, three, okay. Three books here and then four books here that can be five. One of them is worthless. I can't remember which one it is though. So. Oh, it's taking a long time. Alright, that's five, so that's definitely enough. Now uh, we need to once again use Dust of Disappearance because uh, we do not want this specter. Oh, golly, he attacked us anyway. Did we get level drained? He attacked him, so he didn't. That's good. Um. He surprised us, and only a couple of our characters got to move that round. It's interesting that happens. Okay, I was even going to lightning bolt. That didn't hit. Okay, that's good, good, good. Knock. All right. Only the basilisk hurt us, which is good.
Um, and just in case, we want to use our dust now. Because you can get some nasty random encounters there with whites that can uh, drain your levels, of course, or scorpions that can instant kill you with poison. Low chance of getting the encounters overall, but uh, it's something we don't want at all. Uh, they do not miss, no. Spells never miss in this game. They can be resisted, but in the case of, like, fireballs and lightning bolts, they, uh, the resistance means that you only take half damage instead of full damage. And that's it. So it's, uh, that's one of the things that makes them so powerful. They... Now, technically, there are misses if you're using it against something with magic resistance, which there are a few in the game. Tyron Thraxus himself is magic resistance, but uh, it's still a really good, much better chance to hit than with melee weapons pretty much all the time. That was a convenient decision to attack. Okay, we'll go ahead and take this box unopened. Oh, I left the library as well and forgot to record that time. Oh, well. Okay, now back in the library where it's totally safe. Save here, just in case. Ah, uh, I don't want both thirsty wizard men. The annoying thing about Kuto's well is that there's no way to really clear it unless maybe you fight enough uh, random encounters, perhaps. Ah, uh, fastest way to combat them is with necklaces and missiles. Still, don't want to use up those charges too much. Now, theoretically, if I found a Necklace of Missiles in one of the random uh, loot piles, that would be super awesome. We can flee because we surprised them. They're avoiding us, so we can flee there. But it's not worth the uh, time to look since I can basically multiply up so many. It's, it's such a small chance. If I could get an infinite number on each person, that would... Uh, Okay, that's all those. Um, I don't have enough for my 5th level mage yet, but I can get my 5th level fighter. Okay, time to go back out onto a boat again. Um, west... It's generally what I find to be the fastest way to get to this area. And the pyramid, nice, no encounters. The one decision you really have to make two decisions throw, throw a rock, move on. On. Okay, translate knock knock so we don't get killed by the copyright protection boss. Move away quickly from the equipment. We have to come over here and rescue these lizard men. This will make a further quest a lot uh, easier and quicker. Um, oh, need to remember to use dust. Bash our way into here. Advance once and then begin combat. By advancing just once, I. Uh, I'm in a much better position where I can just use fireballs on the uh, guy and his men instead of having to back up or carefully place them. Just move up a little bit because necklaces have short range. And don't even bother with the rest of his loot because I don't need either the experience or the uh, actual loot that it could be. Save the game. Now I come over here to this nomad camp. We enter. We visit them. They take us. Parlay. We join them for a party. At night falls, they're being attacked by kobolds. They ask us if they if we want to help them out. We say no. And they say, okay, goodbye. They take us out of the village, and that's the nomads dealt with. Super easy. Uh, that was pyramid left. That was nomads left as well. Now here's the lizard man. Keep. Enter. 
An anti-magic shield is here, so I can't use any magic items or magic. Luckily, I have a uh, fighter with a negative six armor class. Parlay. Savior is the password that those lizard men we rescued gave us, and so now we just have a one-on-one -on -one fight with the bad lizard man champion and versus our guy Crimson. He should take him out easy, but I save the game just in case because RNG can be a pain. And the lizard men say you've defeated our champion. Uh, this older lizard man, wise lizard man, will now lead us. So if you uh, you guys can. Okay, we parlay abusive and the lizard man actually leave us alone. It's uh, pretty nice. Okay, here's a horde of kobolds. This is very annoying a fight because you can't really use your dust of disappearance before it because it doesn't last quite that long in the outdoors. And uh, they're just going to spread out. This is, looks like a really, really bad one. I left the keep as well. The necklaces and missiles can still do really good, but if they're spreading out that quickly, that uh, fast, that's... Fireballs also have less these. It might just be quicker to uh, auto-combat this and just let them chop them down. But uh, the game actually has physics with Fireball. If you're indoors, it's a bigger explosion because of the uh, compression and all that. All that kind of science rules that uh, Gary Gygax always loved and wanted to have in D&D anyway. The... Uh, so outdoors, it only has a radius of two from the square instead of uh, three out from the square. It means smaller effects. Yep, now the kobolds are starting. So it's not a, a dangerous or bad fight anyway. We took a little bit of damage. Okay, now we don't want to leave. We want to use our dust, though. Because uh, we are de have to deal with a wyvern here first, and it's faster to deal with it than to go through the main portion of the kobold cave, which is actually the small hidden entrance. And hopefully the wyvern will not hit in one shot Crimson. Once again, I want to move away to reduce any chance of that happening. But once again, Crimson is doing a marvelous job of going last, and we killed the wyvern before. Okay, whatever. If you try to go up before fighting him, he uh, comes and attacks you from behind. We wake the kobold and let him take us to the king. He takes us past a couple of traps. Unfortunately, they're not disarmed, just temporarily gone. Now we have to fight three huge fights, so necklaces and missiles are going to be uh, quite the thing here. We mostly want to take out the trolls with the uh, fireballs, especially because the trolls are the most dangerous and annoying. They have a lot of hit points, and that was a really weak fireball. Takes out all the kobolds, at least. I'm going to go ahead and run over here and take out a, uh, the rest of these kobolds as well, just to reduce numbers and increase chances way, and that's that many less times that they have to uh, go through null actions not being able to see us because of Dust of Disappearance. Jeez, really weak fireballs right when I don't need them. There we go. That was a pretty good one. Now they're shooting arrows at us. That's a lot more hits than they usually get. The wild boars, once again, we need to take out here annoyingly because they will uh, not surrender. They'll just run away because they're not smart enough. Oh, God, that's such a good fireball, taking out all the boars instantly. That's really lucky. Because the Necklace of Missiles is uh, supposed to be a physical action of throwing a little orb that explodes rather than l allowing it to cast a spell or just shooting it out of it, the uh, it has a much shorter range than a normal fireball spell would. Okay, that's probably enough killing to uh, make them surrender as soon as their next turn starts. Yep, here it goes. Boom. Okay, now we have... This is actually the easiest fight, even though these uh, envoys of Tyrant Draxus are like, we'll show you how to kill these stupid people, because there's much less kobolds left, only two trolls, and the humans are not all that big of a deal either. Okay, now if we come up here to the secret door, we get a much better position on uh, these particular enemies. In fact, we can put ourselves in a position where it's easier to fireball them.
This is the last, uh, well, last major fight. We can get random encounters against kobolds, which are really annoying, and there's one other encounter that happens because of the trap that we bypassed and have to go through, but uh, it's not a big deal. <laughs> now I come in here, find that the Cobalt King fell in his own trap and died. That is excellent. That is just what we want. We actually want to go here. Here's our net trap. We get tangled in it and Cobalt's attack us. One necklace of missiles is all we really need to clear out this group. And just makes it go a little bit faster than trying to hack our way through them because RNG, once again, is always a pain. We shouldn't miss these guys at all as fifth level fighters with, uh, we got sprung out by traps and they impaled us, but that didn't do any damage either, so. Excellent. Leave. Exit. A little bit faster than the game loading. Uh, surprised by a group of gnolls. Parlay, abusive, and we convince them to run away. Take our boat back. Unfortunately, we're at the very end of the day, so we have to... 1400 is when the uh, sun sets. Zero, zero is sunrise rather than midnight. Dealt with those guys, dealt with those guys, dealt with those guys, dealt with those guys. Well done. Oh, I do need to come in here. I need to talk to him or else I won't be able to complete a later quest and it's a huge pain and major time loss. Now I get to learn the fireballs. Because having an additional fireball spell that I can cast of a little bit more guaranteed strength, 5D instead of possibly uh, 3D is not bad. Now, can I train my fighter levels? No, we cannot train our fighter levels. Too bad. Put them all. Okay, I turned in the kobolds and I split late, so I'm actually a little bit ahead here. That's nice. As I prepare for the last couple of areas. Luckily, the docks operate at all hours, so... Oops. Um, I don't want to go here, though. That's a... Uh... Uh, I need to go to the west. Okay, we enter the Buccaneer base. They take us to a merchant's camp area instead of attacking us right out, which is convenient for us. We could use this dust to turn invisible because that's what we always do. We come over here to these animal pens, release the animals. Now the animals are rampaging muck. There's this uh, slave pen is unguarded. We get this uh, noble's child so we can leave. We get attacked by one group and that's probably one group. We have one more space to go, but we're likely safe. Uh, they did get a surprise on us for some reason, which is convenient, but oh well. They actually did some damage to us. We do get improved armor class with invisibility as well. So, although if they actually did surprise us and caught us flat-footed, that also reduces the armor class. But even so, hitting a negative six armor class with these level one fighters is crazy. So now I've rescued the boy, but we're just going to keep him around for a bit uh, as we visit the Zentil outpost with the uh, thing. Let's see, they let us here. Just. Bucks. Okay, so now we're going to encamp. We're going to rest 13 hours. Now we're going to use another dust. Get up here, relax uh, for an hour until this comes up. We're taken. We talk about magic, mention the full radiance, then talk about nothing. If you try to talk about nothing, we're attacked by four guards in our sleep. Oops. I forgot to uh, go a little bit further than that.
Now, you're supposed to be able to uh, set a watch as well, but I think I hit enter too many times going through it quickly. Alarm goes off in the distance. Now we're at the mercy of RNG for how many uh, groups of guards we get. As well as, of course, the RNG of our necklaces and missiles, possibly not working that well. This is the big group of guards we want to take out quickly. Okay, roll. Not great, though. Ah, call. Jeez. Got a lot more fights here than I needed. Oh well. Okay, that's the Zentil outpost done. We're gonna stay and not take the boat. Okay, we enter the north. And we're coming to Stagino Gate now. Um... To attack these guys... Oh, I need to use my uh, Necklace of Missiles as well. That's unfortunate that I haven't already. Good Necklace there. They surrender really quickly. Okay, Azure, use some dust. We need that. All right, let's go ahead and cast our own fireballs. Now they uh, have taken over the gates. So now we can actually rest. And we only have two fights left in the game. We can rest for several days. If we go in too early, the alarm will still be sounding in the keep in the castle and uh, we'll get into a lot of fights there. So we definitely need to rest up anyway. That's five free hit points actually, I'll need to be full. Our disguises still work from when we first entered the gate. Password of Rhodia. Luckily, after sleeping for so many days, the alarms have gone away and nobody's bothered them, so they aren't on high alert anymore. Enter here, secret door up here. Don't go down these stairs. Another secret door up here. Go up these stairs. Here's the final boss's room. Use our dust. save the game, just in case. Now, there are a couple of things that you can do, including uh, using up the... Uh, necklaces of missiles. Oh, that's right. But these guys have 80 hit points, so they take a long time to get through, so... If they choke and gag from this, which is a decent chance, they can be uh, one-shot pretty easy. 
And then I don't have to worry about characters running out of the charges as well. There we go. And now we attack Tyrant Thraxus, get ready for a final battle. We're all really, really scared, but that's okay. Oh no, that's not the wand we want to use. We want to drop that wand so I don't end. Oh, Blast, you did, didn't you? Come on. No, just use this wand. Just use this wand. Drop your weapon. Yes. Use. Drop the mace. Use that only. He tried to breathe on us, but he can't see us, so... There we go. Oh well. These wands are a little bit safer than actually trying to fight him. And more than one of the dragon roars. little bit disappointing. Um, oh, I'm still a minute away. Wow, I thought that I was uh, a lot closer time than that. I am going to PB. Not quite under sub-hour, unfortunately. Under sub-hour. That's uh, redundancy department, but oh well. Kind of usual, though, considering I did offline and... Uh, that's it. Okay, one hour, 34 seconds. So I could definitely still get better and prove a few things. It is probably better this way than trying to grind out the uh, experience for level 2. What I tried to do in my old route that I did uh, offline for my PB was I tried to do the well uh, before the plaza on my way to the plaza. You're just shy of the level 2 experience uh, for magic user, which doesn't make a huge deal really, but it does mean that I only have one sleep spell, so it's dangerous to take on the well and all those uh, high-level lizard men, in addition to the kobolds and the leader who's immune to it. And I don't have any magic weapons or anything to really help me against him. So it's a bit of a tough fight and sometimes an RNG fast. But if I level up to level 2 and have twice as many sleep spells, I can at least take care of his guys, I thought. So I tried that out, but it's a bit of extra time and it makes that fight longer. The, it's the advantage of doing it on the way to the plaza, which is less out of the way than doing it on the way to the library. But probably just having the Necklace of Missiles for it is, uh, is good. Yeah, it wasn't bad. I'm really close. A little bit of improvement. Right now, the world record for this is 52 minutes. Through some really excellent execution, a few things. And the nice thing is, though, is that I really do do faster when I don't have any kind of commentary going. Trying to explain things and think of things does uh, slow me down a bit as trying to remember all the steps to do while commenting on it, but it's a pretty good uh, run overall though still, and it's nice to get the PB. So, and I w really wanted to get a uh, video done with dialogue, because right now my PB was done offline with absolutely no sound, so it's a bit eh. But still not bad. I'll take it. I got some really horrible RNG, too. The RNG is a little bit better. I got bad RNG in the graveyard, bad RNG in the mansion, pretty much. That could have gone a lot worse than it did. Uh, really bad RNG in uh, Zentil Keep. But that's okay. It was a nice run. That's going to be it for uh, me today. I have next week off because of GDQ. I'm going to be spending most of my time watching GDQ, but I'm going to uh, try to do some speed runs since I have all that time next week anyway. And then after a couple more weeks, I'll be uh, streaming a lot more regularly as the circumstances. But uh, yeah, so that's going to be it for me today. Thanks for watching. Hope you all enjoy, and I will see you all later.